Hi, I'm Kaylin Asher, the founder of Calm Biz, and in this week's video, I want to talk to you about perhaps your fear of or aversion to self-promotion. Now, I find that many of us yogic entrepreneurs are kind of caught in a catch-22. We have a passion, we have a vision, we want to build a business doing something that we love, but at the same time, we've been taught that talking about ourselves, talking ourselves up, and self-promotion is kind of yucky, salesy, and uncomfortable. But my question to you is, how can you expect to make the impact you're meant to make if you rein yourself in and don't share what you're meant to be sharing? So we're kind of stuck in this in-between push-pull place of do we market or don't we? Do we self-promote or don't we? And the question really is not whether we do it or not, but how do we transform the way in which we think about it and deal with it so that it feels really good when we market? Feel good marketing. That's what I like to call the marketing that I teach and the business strategies that I teach because ideally you want to feel really good when you're moving through all areas of your business. So I'm sharing with you today five mindset shifts that I hope will help you step out of that yucky place of self-promotion into a place where you feel really empowered and good about what you're marketing and what you're sharing. So the first thing I want to remind you of is that your students love you and they want to know what you've got going on. Now, they really have a right to know when it comes down to it. I mean, how would you feel if you found out that your favorite yoga teacher was running some amazing workshop or retreat but didn't tell you about it? You would feel it was a disservice to you as a student. So keep that in mind. When you're shying away from sharing what you've got going on with your students, you're really doing them a disservice because they like you and they maybe even love you and they really want to be a part of what's going on in your yoga career, in your yoga business. Now, tip number two, this Second thing I want you to consider is that self-promotion is about service. Now, of course, ideally, we want to be making a living. We deserve to be making a living doing what we love. But my guess is, is that you came into teaching yoga or whatever profession it is that you really follow your heart into because you love it and you want to make a difference in people's lives. And when you're self-promoting, you're not doing it for yourself, you're doing it as an act of service to the people that you want to help. That is why you got into what you're doing. That's why you're teaching. That's why you're living your yoga. It's not about just money coming into your bank account. It's about enhancing people's lives. So always remember that self-promotion and marketing, it's not about being selfish. It's about being selfless. Now, point number three is that I want you to, when you market and self-promote, to speak with confidence, even if you're faking it, <laughs> and do not apologize. So many of us, when we start marketing and talking about things that we have going on in our business, especially if it's money related, we get really small and quiet and apologize a lot or have a lot of caveats in our speech. But that just makes it more awkward. That just makes it more uncomfortable. That is where that icky place of self-promotion comes in. If you instead speak with speak about your offerings with confidence and self-assurance and speak really clearly and directly about what you're offering then you leave it to your students to decide whether or not it's the right fit for them instead of delivering it in this kind of jumbled uncomfortable way that maybe is off-putting to them as well just speak clearly directly and confidently about the the uh, offering that you've put together, the workshop that you're running, the parameters of it, the money involved, and then let them decide if it's the right fit for them. Don't try to help them in one way or another. Just be direct and clear and hand it over to them and let them make the decision. Tip number four, I want you to remember, I want to remind you that people need to be reminded. So you might feel that you're being pushy or salesy by mentioning that upcoming teacher training that you're leading after every class you teach. But the truth is your students might need to hear about it four, five, six, seven times before it finally sinks in 
that yes, it is the right fit for them, it is the right time for them, and they are ready to make that commitment. So you're not being annoying, you're being helpful. People need to be reminded because these things that are really top priority for you and top of mind for you aren't necessarily holding that same space for them yet. So keep talking about it, keep sharing it, be clear and direct in sharing it, and then let them make the decision when it comes down to it whether or not it's the right fit for them. Now, the last thing I want to teach on today and remind you is that it's not about you. You are a teacher to serve your students, so get out of your own way. You are the vessel through which the teachings are flowing, and sometimes those teachings come in the form of a little bit of self-promotion or marketing so that the students can get into the right program for them, get into the right class. So your yoga business might be on the brink of launching into a totally different level if you would just kind of get out of your own way <laughs> and let that happen for you. Get into that place of flow rather than shutting yourself down and not talking about what's happening and feeling really uncomfortable about it to instead embrace what's going on in your business, in your life, and let that flow through you just as effortlessly as your yoga teachings do. So I really hope that you'll consider these five mindset shifts because talking about our businesses, talking about what we love doing is one of the most profound things we can do to bring in more students, to bring in more abundance, more money, and more positive energy into our lives in general. To get really comfortable in speaking about what we love is, is such an empowering thing and I wish that for all of you. And as always, for more business and marketing tips just for yoga entrepreneurs, head on over to calmbiz.com and I will see you there.